Hey everybody, welcome to Bitches in Business, our very first episode of a long-awaited um, podcast or video hangout that Nikki and I have been wanting to do for at least a year, and we're super excited to finally get started and have our first conversation with the very dear uh, friend of ours, Kristen Dwyer, and we'll let her introduce herself in a minute. But we are, um, I'm Becca Decker, I am one of the co-owners of Method Agency, a boutique social media and online PR agency. We specialize in fandom marketing and entertainment marketing, and we, I am based in Philadelphia. My partner Nikki is in Los Angeles. I will let her introduce herself and then also tell you a little bit about Kristen and why we're excited to talk to her today. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Nikki and uh, like Becca said, I co-own Method and we are excited to turn our phones off and then we're excited to uh, have Kristen join. Uh, we know Kristen from years of working together on various campaigns with her clients and people she worked with at uh, the publisher Simon, Simon and Schuster, um, and then she has decided to start her own business. So we are very excited to talk more on the theme of taking the leap. So many people want to start their own businesses, and so many people don't. So we're excited to talk to Kristen and talk about why and how this all came about. So we will throw it to you, Kristen. Tell us your name uh, and tell us about your business, and then we'll get started. Yay! Hi, guys. I'm so happy to be here and so honored to be on your first episode. Um, it's it's really you know taking the leap. I think is the definition of my uh, my my year already, and it's been kind of my my motto. But uh, I'm Kristen Dwyer, and I like you said, I worked at Simon and Schuster for about ten years, and I've known you guys for a while. We've worked together on a lot of campaigns and dealt with a lot of shenanigans and gone to a lot of Comic Cons. But um, I decided, I think probably it was actually it was actually right after this past Comic Con to make the move, or the idea kind of started to take shape to make the move to freelance publicity instead of being part of a book publisher publicity in house department. So I started Leo PR uh, a couple of weeks ago and. First week is going okay. <laughs> I, we were talking before we went live about how she's currently still on vacation or on, not on vacation, but not back in her home office. She's in her, her parents' house <laughs> yeah. in Connecticut. So it's this interesting. Soft launch. Yeah. Soft launch. <laughs> I'm doing work. It's just, it's, it still feels like the holidays. Totally. And that's kind of like a theme, I think, that, a lot of us have felt or still do sometimes when it's a Tuesday and you're at your house and like it could be like last Tuesday we were off right how does this right. Tuesday look any different and it, it, it doesn't have to all the times it should I mean I think it's a, it's important to create those spaces and the things that you do over and over again to make it seem like you're working but um, even if you know there's not a ton of work there but um, yeah we want to know about what that turning point was for you you mentioned at Comic-Con like how um, how did you get to like okay, this is instead of like a, maybe a dream um, yeah. to know how you actually were like, I'm actually going to pursue this or I'm going to do this. So I think, you know, I was at Simon Schuster, like I said, for about 10, it would have been 10 years in May. Um, I worked for Gallery Books Imprint and I had, you know, it was, it was such a great job in so many ways. I was working with three of basically the people I consider my mentors in the industry. Um, I loved the authors I was working with. I loved the environment. I loved everybody at Simon & Schuster. It's a great company. But, um, you know, I think it just, I don't know if it's a quarter-life crisis kind of a thing, but it's a, I'm 35. Was that, was that like a third-life crisis, I guess? I was going to say, I don't think you're <laughs> I don't know. Um, and, it, you know, it just started as a, a little bit of a idea. You know, somebody mentioned it. There have been projects over the years where I might be, able, you know, I would have been able to work on it, but because I was in a department where we work on certain books and there are certain titles, you know, I didn't have that freedom to do that, obviously. Um, and so it just kind of would flit in and out of, but it always seemed like this, it, it seemed so big and such a big leap to take. And to be honest, I don't do change very well. It takes me a while. So for this idea to come in about two or three years ago, and for me to finally take the leap this past, you know, December, that, that makes sense for me. I really need to test the water, look at the water, see how the water's doing before I make any kind of big change. Um, but 
I've worked with a lot of great authors and um, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work with authors, but also exploring some other venues. So that's kind of the freedom to do different things, I think is what really pushed me to, to go out on my own. Uh, I think so many people, when they think of starting their own business, get overwhelmed and get scared of leaving that nest of, like, mm -hmm. you get very comfortable at a corporate job, you know, there's a paycheck coming, there are going to be clients, what is thing to you and how are you overcoming and uh, it's all been really, uh, uh, you know, honestly, it's all been really scary. Um, the hardest thing was actually resigning, um, because I, you know, I just, I really did care for everybody that I worked with and I felt that community very strongly and it, I didn't want to leave anybody in the lurch a little bit. And the idea that people would be mad or disappointed at me was really, it, it weighed on me. Um, the hardest thing for me also is the financial kind of nitty gritty stuff. I've never done that well. And I think that's something that a lot of women don't do well and it's very scary to us. So it's that's been the hardest part for me because I have to really tackle it and really f look at it and read it and face it head on. And because that's not one of my strengths, that's the hardest part. You know, as a publicist, I can email. I don't, I never, I never worried about getting contacts or, I mean, I am a little bit worried about getting clients, but that's the easy part for me. You know, reaching out to people, talking to people, I can do that. That's that's not a problem. But this nitty gritty of, I mean, I talked to you guys about it. You guys have been such a good resource because I was like, what's an LLC? What do I do? What's an S corp? What's a C corp? What does it mean? And I have never felt so clueless as when I looked at a tax form. I don't understand <laughs> what, I, you know, it just, to start all that stuff, it just feels, it felt really big, you know? So just taking it piece by piece is what's helped me. Well, and yeah, and I think are that there, that's, sorry, Nick, go ahead. I was just gonna say, are there any outlets you're going to, obviously besides people, are there any places online or mentors that you have that, you know, you could, that you're headed towards? I mean, I, the smallbusiness.gov page, actually, I felt like it was really helpful and I didn't expect it to be. Um, Who knew? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a government website. That was really helpful. Thank you. Um, you, know, you know, I'm really lucky is that, you know, as I said, I've had you guys to ask questions to. And then I actually have in New York, uh, uh, my, I call them my running friends because they're people I met through my running groups. But they're all freelancers, totally different, um, you know, uh, careers and, you know, um, professions. But they are all freelancers, weirdly enough. It's very strange. And so they've become kind of the support group in this, you know, the, they, I call them my brain squad. And they were the ones who really kind of encouraged me and told me I could do it. And one's, you know, one's a lawyer, one's a photographer. So everybody just had these different opinions. And I think that's what you need. You need your, your community around you in a way. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, you touched on a few things that I think are themes throughout anybody starting out. Like we, we tend to know and be comfortable with the things that we, we know and love, right? So for you, that's publicity. You know what you're doing. Like, Sharon, you've had some concerns about like, how am I going to get access to databases that we've talked about? Like big things yeah. are important in your industry. And then obviously clients are concerned from anybody, but you're right. Like the hardest thing is then learning like, okay, I know this thing and the skill that I can do, but how do I actually do that in some legal format or like, yeah. and it's, I, everybody's going to tell you unless they have some business degree. And even then I've got a girlfriend that has a Harvard MBA and she's like, we didn't learn how to start your own business. We didn't learn like the different, like sure you maybe tap touched on the different tax formats in one class one time, but until you actually have to do it, that is just something you don't know. And here Nikki and I are in our fourth year of business and we just started working with a new accountant and we've found that we've been doing things kind of incorrectly the last few years, not, overall but just certain little things that were like feeling so dumb like we didn't know that and he's been really great about saying like yeah that's why you have pay somebody like me like you <laughs> don't have to know all of that you just need to know the right person to ask the questions to and have that so that I think is a really um 
a really great you know thing, point to p point out. And then also you're just talking about, I'm so glad that you have that group of friends, the running friends, to give you that encouragement because Nikki and I have been had the benefit of having each other. So when things are mm -hmm. discouraging or we don't know if we should go after something, like it's not just me sitting here in my kitchen with my cat on my lap, which currently is happening. It's it's you know me and Nikki figuring out all those those things. So I think that's really important and great that you have that. And I think that's, you know, in a way, in so many ways, you know, this is about me being uncomfortable. The money, the taxes, the accounting is uncomfortable for me. Um, leaving Simon & Schuster was uncomfortable for me. But I, I think also there was, you know, I, I was going to be 10 years at Simon & Schuster in May. And around the summertime, you know, it was... I just had that fear that I was not uncomfortable anymore. And there was something to be said about making yourself uncomfortable. And I was really, the the job at Simon Schuster was like this cozy blanket. Like I just, I knew everything. I knew how it was going to work. So this is to scare me a little bit. And unfortunately that's all part of it. Part of it. I love that you're talking about being uncomfortable. I think there's so much to be learned like from jumping out on your own and having to find these new things, having to mm -hmm. research them, having to rely on other people to be your community. Um, I love that you're talking about that. I think that's really. One of my, um, um, uh, just real quick, one of my friends, she always said, you know, she said, if you, you jump, the net will appear kind of a thing. Whenever I would say, I have no idea what I'm going to do for, you know, for, invoices or this or that she just you know she said just jump and it'll, it'll you'll figure it out and I think that was that was the hardest thing for me to do is just to believe that I would figure it out did Maybe you set I, yourself up in a way like financially did you, you did you have a goal like I need to have three months in savings or something like how did you I mean obviously without getting super detailed about numbers how did you feel like you set yourself up um do you have no money right now? Like, do you feel like you're comfortable for three months in case no clients come in? Like, oh, tell us no. how you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> no. I live in New York City. Right. <laughs> and my apartment is a, is a problem. Um, I, I did have some, I have some savings. So, and I sort of set myself up knowing that the first couple, I'm okay with the first couple of months kind of being a wash a little bit. I'm prepared for that. I had okay. savings for that. And um, so that's, that's what I was ready for. Um, you know, it can't go much further than the two months, but um, yeah, that's, you know, kind of, I did, did have you, that, but I, you know, it wasn't, I, I wish I almost had started planning a little bit sooner because, but it's, it's hard to, you know, it was a hard struggle and like, you, you know, you're living your life, you're doing things. And again, living in New York, nobody has savings in New York. So um yeah, but just a couple of months kind of as a And do you buffer. have people that you're working with kind of right off the bat or some projects or are you kind of like, he's here? Yeah. Well, I was saying this is my soft launch week, as you know, for uh, for my work. But um, yes, I actually am going to be working with Christina Lauren and Anna Todd. So I'm very excited to be working That's with awesome. them. They're two of my authors from Gallery and we've always worked really well together. So I'm going to be working with them going forward into the new year. So, and they have lots of exciting projects coming out in the spring. So it's really nice because uh, Anna does a lot of international travel. So I'll be working with her on that. And Christina and Lauren just are doing so many things. <laughs> so many things as you guys know. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's makes the launch, you know, Yay. easier. I can't, we did the same. We had a client when we started it and, and people don't, and I more power to them if they're starting like day one with like on the hustle. And obviously, it's still a hustle. We always need more clients, right? But yeah, that makes it a little less stressful. So exciting, and congrats to you. Thanks. Um, let's so you, talk. A, what were you gonna say? Nope. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. Yes. Um, a little bit out of that, like scary starting point let's talk a little bit about those heroes those people you're looking to um who are already out there in the in the business world um that we can all take an, a page from i think those are the people that are easier to take, take the leap yeah well you know i feel like i have this long list and of course i was thinking about this when i you know you sent me that question and i of course couldn't think of anybody but i do i mean on a personal level it's really you know i have this 
this group of women in my life who have always been so encouraging. But, you know, um, one the first person that came to mind, and I feel like we might have talked about her in the past, but um, it's actually someone I used to work with. She was a producer at SiriusXM. Her name was uh, Laura Haywood. And Laura was the books producer, and she did Broadway talent at Sirius. So she was the one who would take everybody around. And she loves Broadway, like, loves it, knows everything about it, you know, that you could tell it's just written over on her face how much she loved it. And she took what basically was this passion project of hers being um, like I have a, a, a Twitter celebrity talking about Broadway stuff, and she's turned it into this, you know, little mini um, consulting firm slash she's kind of woman about town. And so she's left serious. I think she might be it might be two or three years now. And I, she does the AOL build conversations with the Broadway talent people. Now she just, she's everywhere and she's expanded her, um, I don't know, her platform so much. I think it was, it was really kind of incredible because she took this passion and something she loved so dearly and made it her career. So that's somebody who came to mind for me. That's awesome. What do you know her Twitter name? I would like to stalk her and I'm sure other people would as well. I'm pretty sure it's Broadway girl. It may be okay. Broadway Girl NYC, but it's Broadway Girl. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll find it. We'll and find then someone share it. Yeah. Later. Um, and someone else who actually I had the I was very lucky before I left Simon Schuster. I was working for um, uh, the one of our you know imprints is called North Star Way, and they are publishing a book actually next month by Amanda Steinberg, who is the founder of Daily Worth, um, which is this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is this? Uh, <laughs> I got very excited there. <laughs> oh my what? god! Uh, she's the founder of Daily Worth. Um, she's one of Oprah's Super Soul Sunday mm. picks. She's a financial uh, guru, but basically her whole mantra is to make finances and taking control of your your financial you know world uh, easier for women and making it uh -huh. not scary. Which Cool. obviously really related to me, you know, as I was trying to uh, make this step and everything. But um, same thing for her. She, you know, I, she, you know, and I read the book. So she was married. She had uh, two kids, I believe, and she just wasn't happy in her job. It wasn't working. And she started Daily Worth. And now it's, I think, one million subscribers every day. Uh, it's kind of incredible. And, you know, I think it's, I really like her mission statement. <laughs> Cool. And that's Amanda Steinberg, you said? Mm -hmm. The book's called Daily Worth? Uh, the site is called Daily Worth. The book oh. is called Worth It, and it comes out uh, right. in February. That's awesome. I'm very excited. I've been, one of my things that I wanted to do this year was kind of read more, you know, nonfiction uh, books, because I'm really great about reading romance and YA novels mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so I have a book by Nicole Lappin that I'd started last year, but hadn't finished, called Rich Bitch. So it's oh, pretty yeah. similar, like... 12 Steps to Financial Freedom for Women specifically. Yes. Um, and it was awesome. It's a very like worksheet heavy, like you need to do these things, get this stuff in order. So it was pretty overwhelming like a year ago where my life was, but I feel like now I'm like, I need to get this in order. And you're right. You said earlier, like for some reason, that's something that I'm pretty great with my finances, but it's just like, it can get overwhelming. And especially in our thirties, I think we're like, mm -hmm. we need to be thinking about this in the future. And we need to have this sort of nest egg. And are we buying houses yet? And like, especially as, you know, single women without children, I think it's, yeah, there's a lot of pressure there. But yeah, I mean, we can do it. We can do, we can do it. I think it is, you know, and the way Amanda talks in the book is very, um, you know, coaxing, you know, okay, it's going to be okay. You can look at this number. Don't be scared of those numbers mm -hmm. on the page. It's all right. If you don't have this and this, you mm -hmm. will get, you know, I just liked the way she talked uh, awesome. to the reader. Good. <laughs> <laughs> We need to make a list of this because I'm over here reading this book of restaurant reviews from this woman in North Dakota, and it's awesome. But I think I need a nun. <laughs> <laughs> what is she reviewing? Like the local yeah. Dunkin' Donuts? They don't have that. The local it's Speedway gas wonderful. station. Wonderful. You probably have seen some of her yeah. stuff online, Marilyn Haggerty. She just writes like the funniest, like most almost Hemingway esque oh. food reviews of but like of good stuff or no? It's like local local like truck stop diners like oh she's God. a well-traveled woman but she lives in north dakota grand forks and writes about the opening of an olive garden oh <laughs> my like, god and so she has a book now yeah so the book is out on anthony bourdain's imprint oh. but it's he 
cultivated all like went there and looked through all of her reviews starting and like i think it starts in 87 so it's like 87 oh and the God. best the best part about it is it'll be like this place is still open this place closed <laughs> like after it's really cute that is amazing it's been a really fun read this but, feels like the best tip i've gotten out of this conversation yeah this is <laughs> It reminds me I, of it's like old, I can't uh, put it down. It reminds me of that old SNL sketch with uh, the what Chris sketch? Martin. The SNL sketch with Chris Farley and uh, uh, Adam Sandler, where they would be this old couple reading Zagat uh, reviews. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> sketch. <laughs> pretty much like that. She's like, the waitress is friendly, but not too friendly. Like, <laughs> like she. It's very Hemingway. It's like short, very serious sentences. That's awesome. Well, I've written down all three things that we've mentioned thus far, so we'll make sure to put them in our notes of this YouTube channel, this YouTube video or podcast if we end up doing it that way. Because um, that's awesome. Well, because you have done PR for authors and books for many years. So I know plenty of viewers will want to hear your advice. So let's just jump in. Like, what's your best advice to authors? New, old, uh, so let's just start at the top. For getting themselves out there. Um, for getting themselves out there. Well, I think starting at the beginning, I think the best advice is to treat your book launch and your publisher, I think to treat everything like you're all on the same team. You're all on the same team going for the same goal. I think sometimes uh, the authors that I've had the best relationship with or the things that or the books that I think work the best are the ones where everybody seems to be going towards the same goal. Sometimes it's and that sounds so simple, but sometimes it's almost like uh, people don't remember that the publisher wants the author and the author's team to succeed. And um, when everybody's in conflict with each other, it just it just it, it makes everything harder and it's kind of amazing how often that does happen. So just to remember that, you know, everybody's on the same team and everybody should be doing their part. You know, the publisher can't do it alone. Authors can't do it alone. And that's why you have each other. Um, you know, I was thinking that my favorite, you know, when you talk about publicity, like what should people do? What should authors do to get all, you know, get on the bestseller list or the, you get the most media. My favorite story was in the back of a PW once where it said, you know, an author asks his publicist, how do I get on the New York Times bestseller list? And the publicist says, how the hell should I know? Because they, <laughs> because there's no, there's no formula, you know, I've seen everybody have every single thing, you know, the Today Show or a morning show, an NPR, a cover story, and, you know, a review in People, and it still doesn't sell any books. And then I've seen the opposite where, you know, a blog post helps move things along or creates more buzz or, you know, there's no magic formula. I wish there was, but there, there isn't. There's no guarantees, as we've talked about many times. We can put yeah. in the work, but there's no guarantees that, you know, A, also, you know, you could get a review, but it might not be a good review. We can't yeah. guarantee that either. Mm -hmm. I feel like we talk about that a ton with clients, prospective clients, and on our own blog is there is no magic formula. There are best mm -hmm. practices. There are things you can just like throw spaghetti at the wall at the end of the day. And sometimes it's just lightning in a bottle, what takes off and what doesn't. And sometimes it is just a lot of it is just plowing away the same thing, like just yeah. really working hard every day. That's really. Nikki and I were reading an article yesterday specifically about authors and best selling authors and how they keep at the top of their game, how they keep at the top of the lists, like a James Patterson. Mm -hmm. First of all, didn't know that guy had a team of writers, but he produces a book like twice a year. I mean, there's just consistent writing. And you know, like I haven't read a James Patterson book since I was probably in high school. I'm mm -hmm. sure they're all the same formula and like you can say what you want about that or not that, but he's making, he's cashing checks and he's getting on the bestseller list and he's selling millions and millions. He's like in the hundred million range of books or something like that. And I think it's just consistent, you know, maybe one's going to sell a lot more than another. Um, maybe they sell consistently the amount. I think the big thing with especially authors is just consistent writing. And probably these days with social media being consistently out there to talk to your fans and like continuing to build that relationship with them so that they're there whenever you do have a new book. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and then also it'd be interesting if James Patterson started today, you know, would he be the success that he is? 
Um, I know something that, you know, we, I think we've worked together for, you know, five years, maybe that's, you know, about the time we started working together just to see how the landscape has changed from when we first met to now. I mean, just taking romance, which is a small, you know, part of publishing, but the focus on, you know, what a good hit for romance novels is, you know, it, you know, at one point, there were all these, you know, there were a lot of blogs and then there was the overabundance of blogs. Mm -hmm. And then there were certain blogs that were making, you know, huge, um, you know, they were, you were really seeing the impact as soon as they posted. And then maybe we're not seeing that as much. And now, you know, kind of focusing on Instagram, you know, if an Instagrammer does a review, does that make a, you know, make a jump on Amazon or is it just need to be posted? It's, it's always going to change. Um, yeah. But I think you're right. You know, having, the good, the good news about social media is that authors can be connected to their readers, and the bad news is they can be connected to their readers. <laughs> totally. So a question for you that I'd like to know, because here you are coming from a publishing house that had in-house publicity team, right? You do stuff for your authors, and you especially. We work with a lot of different publicists on our end. Like, you're a very connected publicist. You know, we hear from you consistently on your offers. And, um, but then you're starting your own, your own firm and you working with some of those same authors you were working with at gallery. What yeah. is the need for an author? Where do they get to a point when an in-house publicist that their publisher is not enough and they need to hire somebody outside? Well, you know, I think putting aside, um, let's put aside actually me for a second because I think for the most part, when you hire an outside publicist, the in-house publicist has so many titles that they're working on. It's, it's just a little bit extra focus. That's not to be, I mean, all in-house publicists, I think, you know, and I, I still feel very loyal to my in-house publicists, that they are working very hard to, um, you know, give time to each book and work on each project. But sometimes I think when authors want a little bit more um, interaction and stuff, I think that's when the outside team comes in. Or, you know, if you have certain goals or, you know, niche uh, projects that, you know, your in-house publicist just isn't going to have the time to work on. Um, for me, I think, you know, with Christina Lauren and Anna Todd, I think we had this, we had a good relationship. And I think when I said I was going to be leaving, they just liked the idea of me continuing to work with them because I knew them so well. And also, I now have that flexibility to kind of, work on a little bit of these bigger projects, niche things that maybe the in-house publicist or I didn't have time to do when I was, um, you know, working as an in-house publicist. Great. What do you, what do you think authors can do to help their in-house publicists and publicists that they may be hire on their own? What can they be doing online? What, what is helpful? Well, I think, you know, um, so many things, uh, you know, helping them with, that's kind of what, going back to that idea of like this being a team sport, you know, helping your, in, know that your in-house publicist has a lot of different titles, a lot of different, you know, responsibilities, and the more help you give them, the better, and the, you know, they're going to be so grateful, but, you know, having that conversation with them early on about ideas, sending them all your contacts, you know, I always said to my authors, you know, if you have a idea, please feel free to like send me, just send me a quick email, you know, or something that comes up or a news story that might relate to your book. Um, that's always helpful. Uh, what else? <laughs> I just went totally blank. No other idea. Just kidding. Yeah, that's, um, it. <laughs> that's all I got. Well, when should they start reaching sorry. out to you? Say they, they have a book day on the calendar when do you want to start hearing from them i mean to, it, usually for me the starting point was when the manuscript was ready the galleys were coming in and that usually is when the editor will say oh this is a good time to introduce you to your publicist mm -hmm. you know if it's um you know sometimes when we didn't have enough time for the manuscript I mean, it was, maybe it was a non-fiction title you know you can kind of get away with having a conversation before the manuscript is in but most of the time the publicist wants to read the book they want they want to you know dive in before uh, having a conversation do you really read every book i did <laughs> i i you know what i sometimes i would like have to stop midway but i really tried <laughs> i really yeah. tried. i mean it's important but it's also hard when you have a lot of 
people you're working with? I, I had a, and not Amanda's book, but I had a business book like a couple of years ago and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I tried, I tried so hard. It just it wasn't for me, <laughs> but I read some of it. But yes, we try to read every single book. <laughs> Uh, for our PR pros out there, for people who are just getting started, or maybe even authors, what do you think makes a pitch good? What are sites picking up that you've had a lot of success with? I mean, I don't think you really can say, you know, because either you, I think being concise, short and sweet, that's that was my um, always my motto, and I think a lot of other publicists would agree. But you know what? It, what outlets pick up changes so much and what they're looking for is always going to change. So I think being um, fluid, you know, being able to kind of change your pitch and say like, okay, this isn't working. What are we going to try next? Being able to, you know, uh, think of new ideas if something isn't working is a good, uh, is a good thing to be able to do. Um, but you know, it's, it's hard to say what outlets are looking for, honestly, because I feel and you just have to you have to keep up with that stuff because it is always changing. And we you, you sort of touched on this when you were talking about how different things are now versus five years ago. But do you think like <clears throat> do you think you know I I'm gonna kind of answer the question that I think you're gonna know what I feel <laughs> after the, I say this, and you just have to tell me if you agree. Do you think that like five years ago you could go to one place and like it could be a really big huge thing because it's a big readership it could make a huge difference and today that's just not happening as much maybe they still have the huge readership but just people aren't uh, i don't know a overload of information out there um mm -hmm. do you feel like finding just many different assets like putting it on instagram or also having a big blog maybe having like 10 small people if you're talking about a book doing a blog tour um mm -hmm. do you feel like that's kind of the strategy that's been most successful in the recent year or two I t you know, I, uh, my first response is, I don't know, in a way. Um, hmm. I definitely feel like we're overloaded. Um, I feel like there are so many different, you know, um, just even, you know, I had an author uh, in November, and most of the media he did, and he was a, you know, kind of celebrity author, but most of the media he did was these Facebook Lives events, for different platforms so like it, one was a Hearst publication one was um, I think now this or something along those lines and it's amazing how you know they had you know hundreds of thousands of views and shares and all these things and it's you know it, I'm just not sure about the impact though so I feel like I don't I don't know a little bit you know it just but it does feel like we're, we're constantly everybody is so distracted and our attentions being you know it, being put in all these different places, I'm not really sure what the the best you know solution is at the moment. Well, that's helpful. Just kidding. Yeah, I, I mean, it's true. I mean, obviously, we do PR not outside, not in the book realm, really. But yeah, it's a. It feels like you're knocking on doors, like click me, pick me, some days. And even when they you do pick you, it doesn't mean that it's going to be a home run. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what I was saying. You, we've seen. Um, I, I'll just use the example of fresh air. You know, I think maybe when I started my publicity career, you know, when I was at Penguin or you know whatever, I would everybody would have said if you get a fresh air, like New York Times bestseller, go out, like what else do you need besides that? And I've had authors, you know, as recently as a year ago, who were on Fresh Air, and it's great, and I love that interview, and it's an amazing piece. It was great, and um, there was nothing, you know, it wasn't like a dud of an interview or anything, but it didn't really move the needle. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to find out. Sure. We're always trying to find out. I think that's the, that's, that's the conclusion. Like, you always just have to be able to try new things because we don't know what's going to work. So just write a really good book is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have the word of mouth there. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, something um, that I've always loved with Christina Lauren is that we've had this, we've had such a good relationship where we have always been able to share ideas and think of things where we, I feel like in the years that I've worked with them, the amount of ideas and things we've thrown against the wall to see if it sticks has been, it's been all over the place. You know, it's just, I think to keep constantly trying new things and um, because every, it is evolving anyway. So maybe the thing that works, you know, this year is not going to work next year because everybody's going to be on this new social platform 
that I don't know. So we'll see. Which I mean, not to plug ourselves, but also to plug ourselves and you, obviously. <laughs> this is the need why a certain level people do need to work with professionals because it is our job to be always trying those things, right? And like, we may try something with one client that worked that didn't with another, but we're going to try, you know, just those sorts of things. I mean, are the benefits of having a team marketing wise or PR wise that can kind of, can kind of help you. And yeah. Yeah, keeps us in business at least. That's exactly. Okay. I mean, that's what I mean. And also you guys know, so, you guys know so much more than I do about the, you know, the social media front and everything. And I'm, you know, I'm minimal social media over here. And I know that's, that's also something that I'm gonna have to work on. But, um, you know, I just, I remember, you know, just going back like five years ago, maybe six years ago, when um, we started doing blog tours. And I remember saying it in department meetings and everybody was like, ooh, a blog tour. What's that? It's shiny. It's new. And now everybody's like, oh, blog tour. It's, it's okay. We get what you're saying. You know, it's not as exciting as it once was. Right. Um, we know that things are changing all the time, but are there places that you think that authors really need to be online? What are those outlets or what, what, what should they be doing? I mean, I guess it depends on the genre. You know, that, that's something that's, oh, it's always going to change. Um, but I do think that it's really, I mean, maybe for everybody, it is important to have some kind of social online presence, even if it is just so that somebody can Google and see what you look like on a, you know, very basic website. Um, you know, I think my, the marketing team at Simon & Schuster, who are fantastic, I think they would also say they don't want you to do anything that's untrue to yourself. And I'm sure you guys would agree. Like it feels, if it feels like it's not you, it's not going to work. Um, but, you know, I, I think it just, you would, I don't think there's any one uh, outlet that would, you know, be for all authors. I mean, obviously, the the Entertainment Weeklies, the People magazines are still really important, and it's still, um, you know, that's a huge it's a huge get when you get one of those. Definitely, that's awesome. So, well, before we wrap up, let's like talk a little bit more about you. Where can people find you, first of all, and then <laughs> also tell us about your agency and what's going to make you different. What's going to, what already is different about you versus other people if an author might be considering working with a publicist? Um, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Yes, you do, girl. <laughs> Just spell it. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, eventually you will find me at leoprny.com. That is going to be my website. And that is not up yet, but it's going to be soon. And then uh, on Twitter, I'm at Katie Precious, which sounds crazy, but um, the backstory is, uh, when I was working at gallery, I said to Christina and Lauren, uh, if I got to go to Comic-Con, I would join Twitter about a couple of years ago and I did get to go. So <laughs> I had to join and they helped me create my Twitter name. Um, so you can find me at Katie Precious. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll hopefully be setting up a Leo, uh, Twitter account as well sometime soon. Great. But the website will be leoprny.com. ny.com. Awesome. We'll make sure to put that in the notes of this conversation. <laughs> I have a note or to do it. In, or in the podcast. We don't know. Exactly. <laughs> One of the places this will be. <laughs> we I, are also figuring this out. I, you know, I'm still, you know, this is going to be an interesting uh, conversation to revisit a year from now. But I think what makes me different is I do feel like I have always been really hands-on with my authors. And I think that that is, I like to say, you know, I'm, a lot of TLC with my authors. So I feel like I give a lot of attention and, um, you know, focus. So I, I don't know though. Uh, we're going to see because yeah. it's also brand new. So we'll see what makes me different. Yeah. There us, are a lot of great outside publicists out totally. there and um, uh, I'm looking forward to learning from them too. Yeah. And I think from, from my perspective, knowing you the way that I do, and then also knowing other publicists and there's a lot of great ones out there that we have good relationships with, but um, publicists have a reputation a lot of times of being really harsh and really hard to get to know or just, um, I don't know why, I don't know where it comes from, especially in the entertainment realm. Mm -hmm. There may be a little softer on the book, the book end, but like when you're talking about, you know, publicists of celebrities or, um, that, that can be just really rough sometimes and you just have never been that way at all. And so working with you, you're not, 
you know, you've worked with some on some really big projects and some really like popular things, things that have done really well, and you'd never, you'd never show off or you'd never talk like you were like better <laughs> than somebody else. I mean, even in just the way you just talked about yourself, I don't think you're. Um, but I think there's a lot to be said about the way that you have developed relationships with your authors and other other people, other people that you're pitching to. You've pitched to us, other people you're working with. You've worked with us. I think that is very important, and that's something that's um, going to take you take you far in this business. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. I, it is. I think the relationship part is what I love most about publicity. I do love just, you know, it, and it takes time. You know, it's not something that happens overnight, but it is such a wonderful thing to be able to, you know, to build on those relationships and stuff. And uh, it's something I really enjoy. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. I think you're the antithesis of like the gruff PR gal that we know in entertainment. <laughs> Everyone needs to work with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Yay! 2017. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on our first episode here Yay. of Bitches in Business. Great we will job, guys. This. It. Air high fives. <laughs> high fives. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back with another episode soon. And Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Bye.